Welcome my peeps, my peoples. Please like, comment, subscribe, share the video. It'd be greatly appreciated. It's Mary Jane and let's talk about Snowfall, the season finale, season two, episode 10. It was like, OMG, like I really love this show. This sh I can't even describe how wonderful this show is. This show is just like, oh, it's just excellent. For real, for real. So Franklin is in jail. He is locked up. This is just like so sad. It's just like, damn, Franklin has not really enjoyed being a big time drug dealer or a kingpin. He has a few moments, but you really can't tell that he's enjoying the lifestyle unless he's enjoying, you know, organizing, making money. And, you know, that's it basically because he's not really spending money. The only time he really spent money was he brought houses, three apartments, three, three houses for him Kevin and Leon. Now we know that Kevin is actually dead. He's not here anymore. That's what it seems like. They show us they showed us his grave site. So I'm just like, damn, Kevin is gone. And then we have, you know, Franklin being booked into jail, taking the pictures. This is a whole strange place for him. This is something that's out of his, you know, lane, his territory, anything he knows because he's never been to jail. And then we have Lorena. She's sitting there. She goes, that's him. That's the one that, you know, killed Kevin. Like, that's the one that fired the gun. So it's like, damn, he's booked. He's done. And then, you know, how they show the inmates being, um, enter into prison, enter into jail, like they have to butt, they got to get butt naked, scoot across the bend, bend over, cough, hold their nutsack, you know, um, and just the way the prison guards are watching them. A lot of people said, say and believe that, you know, the jails and in, in that tactic is like what they did in slavery time, you know, treating them like they like cattle, like a piece of meat and, um, basically taking away any manhood they really do have. And, um, it was a documentary done on that, but it was in right. It was on Rikers Island. So, anyways, so moving on from that, um, it was just like, damn. It's like you could tell Franklin he's like out of place. He don't belong there because he's not a gangster. He's not a street dude. It's not like he got a gang. He do have people working for him, selling drugs or whatever. And they got each other's back or whatever. But he's not in the Bloods, the Crips, or the Thirty Sixes, the Forty Eighters, or whatever gangs that you guys can name because that's the only ones I can name and the kings or the latin kings or whatever and he's not in a gang like that so when he gets to jail or he gets to prison he doesn't have people on the inside that's waiting for him to come where he's already protected and like you know they they give him the red carpet when he comes to jail because he's an og or he's in a gang where he's protected so it's just like it's just all messed up so you know franklin is really trying to get to his lawyers Get, get to his lawyer and his lawyer comes, you know, um, Jay Young or whatever. He makes Franklin makes the phone call. Franklin's nervous. He's looking around. He's in, you know, like a holding area with like 10 or 15 guys. And he gets a phone call and he calls Uncle Jerome to let Uncle Jerome know, hey, listen, get me out of here. Get Jay Young or whatever. And it's like, oh, it's going to be all right. So it's going to be all right. And so now he now he meets up with his lawyer. His lawyer's like, you've been charged with a 187 arrest song. Ain't nothing but a 187 on an undercover cop. <laughs> so now, so we have the 187, and he's going to be charged with PC, murder. Um, and basically the lawyer said, that's what you're going to be charged with. We don't, we don't know what kind of evidence they have against you until we go to, you know, our hearing. And then you're going to be granted bail because this is your first charge. And, um... So, like, they're not hearing anything from Teddy or Lorena or anything like that. And so, like, when his lawyer said that, it's like, damn, you know what you want to hear when you when your lawyer come to see you? You want to hear, like, oh, it's going to be all right. I got you. You know, the, the DA on the case, uh, you know, I actually played tennis with him, the judge on the case. You know, we actually go on our yachts together. We go on vacations. That's what you want to hear from your lawyer. When he tell you he got the inside connect, so don't worry about it. That's what you want to hear. You don't want to hear about waiting to preliminaries, waiting to this. You want to hear, like, yo, I got the hookup. You're going to get out. So, you know, certain people got some type of connections with lawyers that they do get, you know. So... He has to hear about that. And then we we see Teddy and Lorena basically working together. Um, Teddy's trying to convince Lorena that, you know, what he's doing is way more important than what she's doing for the DEA. And he goes, like, take a look at it. Your people at your at your organization, DEA, they close you down, shut you down, and continue what I was going, what, you know, what my agenda is. So, therefore, my shit is more important than yours. And so he's swinging her along, telling her, like, what you're doing 
it, you know, you know, like um, the war against drugs is actually pointless because as long as people are taking drugs, there's always going to be drug dealers. It's always going to be a need for drugs or whatever. But he also tells her, like, you know, Nixon got me on the case. You know, I'm working for Nixon. And basically, he's doing a war against drugs. And, you know, it's a bigger picture. It's a bigger thing. You know, we're working with Naragra or whatever. <laughs> um, Nor- <laughs> I'm about to say Noriega. <laughs> we're working with the Nicaraguans. <laughs> Nicaragas. <laughs> oh, I'm saying that all wrong. Um, so, basically, you know, he's letting her know that my war is bigger than your war. And my war would actually make a change and make a difference, especially with having the government on the side, not having people shut you down and all this other stuff. So basically, he's feeding her a spoon of shit and telling her that at the end of the day, you'll be able to shut down all these drug dealers, all these people I'm dealing with. You'll be the best, the big, the best, the greatest, you know, DEA agent. You'll have all types of hearts and shit like that. Basically feeding her a line of shit. But actually saying that the people that he's working with, he's actually going to bring them down in the future. So it's just like, damn, why even fuck with Teddy? Because, you know, you're messing with Teddy. At the end of the day, Teddy's going to shut you down when Teddy's giving you the drugs, when Teddy's supplying you with what you need. And, and you know, so it's just like it wasn't like Franklin, you know, it's like to me, it's like entrapment straight up and down. But it is what it is with the situation since, you know, um, the president at the time, Nixon, has the war against drugs. So it's all good. And so Lorena, she's thinking about it. And she's coming to, she, it's, it's, she thinks it sounds so great that she's busting these de- dealers. But there's going to be more and more and more. So she's just looking at, you know, what she's going to receive at the end of the day. I don't know if she really thinks that she's helping the community or she's helping people or anything like that. <clears throat> I just think it seems like she's doing it for notoriety. And also she could be trying to see what Teddy's all about and what he, who he's really dealing with and who he's really working for because she really don't know. And her bosses really don't know. So we get Franklin. He meets up. He, he, he goes to court and you know, everybody's looking at him at court like, damn. So Franklin's there. He's at court. And, um, Basically, he think that he's going to be getting off, you know, you know, set to trial for February 28th. They was like, nah, March 12th. Then they asked for bail. It was supposed to be $75,000 for bail. But then the DA on the case was like, no, you know, he's charged with murder. And he and the witness is a DEA agent. And he had a fake license, a stolen car that didn't belong to him. And his lawyer is trying to say, hey, listen, um, it's his first offense. And what teenager don't have you know, a fake ID, but this is all, and he had, and then the DA said he had a pocket full of money. So basically he set it up where he's a danger, he's a danger. The witness that we have is credible. And then on top of that, this guy has a fake ID and he has a pocket full of money so he can get away. He can go. So his lawyer tried to convince the judge. The judge wasn't trying to hear it. Of course not. You know, the blackmail, but also what's funny when, um, Uh, Okay, I'm going to get to that part. So we get to that. And so then Franklin is denied bail. So he has to stay in jail. And he's just like, damn, it's just like, oh, my goodness. And, you know, Franklin doesn't have his shoes or anything because he was robbed of his shoes by the Mexicans. And it's it's just like, you know, he was he was told what bunk to sit on. It's like he's being patient or whatever. And I can't fault Franklin for letting his sneakers get stolen because but in actuality, you don't supposed to let that happen. But Franklin's thinking that he's going to get out of jail. He's going to get out of get, get out and he won't be in there any longer. So to catch a charge with fighting or anything like that on assault case and keep you back in, there, especially if he's going to be up for bail because they're going to use that against you, too, as well, because the guards are going to tell them. And so he'll be, and then he seems like even more of a violent criminal too as well, but he was scared too as well. Um, because if it was Leon, Leon, that, you know, it would have been fighting. It would have been down. It would have been, it would have been, it would have been a war. So we have that situation. Frank was walking around with no shoes. It's just like, he's just all messed up. He's just lost. He's out of, he's out of his comfort zone and he don't know anybody in there. He's never been there. This is a whole different world. Yes. Prison jail. It's a whole different world for anybody that's never been there. I've never been there. Never want to go there. Um, but so it's like a hell hole, straight up hell hole. And you got, um, inmates getting beat up. One guy didn't want to bend over and 
cough and his ass. He thought it was some gay shit. He thought that it was disrespectful. It was taking his manhood. So he refused to do it and he got beat down and took into the hole. And so we have that situation. So now Franklin is ordered to go to a correctional facility and then he meets, uh, but before then, as he's going, one of the guys got the guys lined up and the guy's like, oh, he's like, I use guys, one of the inmates was like, you guys happy? You got me behind bars for selling a dime bag, a dime bag of weed, basically, because weed was more popular at the time than crack cocaine, because that's what people smoke, dope weed or whatever. Sometimes people prefer dope as weed and sometimes people prefer dope as cocaine. So um, you have that. And then the guard was like, oh, shut up. I don't want to hear. He was like, yes, sir, master. And he was like, would you think that's funny? <laughs> I was like, this <laughs> shit was funny to me. And so he gets on the bus. He, now he, he's entering the hall. He's got to find a bunk. And guess who he bumps into? None other than Ray Ray ass. Ray Ray is there with his crew. Ray Ray walks up to him and hug him and shit. Talk about it's all good. You know, we're from the same hood. You know, we got to stick together. So I'm like, damn. Is it really going to be that easy for Franklin? Is that really going to go down? And I was just like, damn, Ray Ray can't let that go. Ray Ray's going to let that go. I was like, shit, for real, for real? I was like, but damn, you do have to stick together when you're from one neighborhood. But he murdered his boy. Oh, you know, you know, his boy got murdered. And he beat the shit out of Ray Ray, too, as well. So we have that situation go down. So the next, the same night, Franklin is laying on his cot. And guess what? He's attacked by Ray Ray. He's get beat. He's... Ray Ray and his goons, he get beat down. I mean, he is beat down. And then Ray Ray comes back and kick him in the stomach. He's laying on the ground. It's just like, damn, man, what the fuck you doing after Franklin Fuzzer? Franklin's on the ground. And, um, yeah, Franklin's not built for prison, but now he will be. Just like we wouldn't think that he was built for shooting Kevin, even though he shot him in the leg and he, and he hit a vital organ and Kevin bled to death. So... Did he bleed to death because the ambulance took too long? Because that could be actually a civil case. <laughs> you know, Franklin don't have to go down from that because it all depends on how long it took the ambulance to be there. You know, why he bled to death because if the ambulance came, can't they just, you know, stop the bleeding and shit like that and give him oxygen and, you know, open up a vein and put blood in if they carried on the ambulance at that time in the 80s? So we have that situation go down. And so, you know, Kevin is, I mean, um, Franklin, he got he got beat down. I was just so mad. I was just like, oh, oh, oh. So Kevin got beat down and shit like that. But I was like, damn, he hasn't had any. He had a little bit the money he got, you know, the future he can have. And then he got some um, offshore accounts. He got shit like that. And he got some investments and stuff like that. But I guess, um, but you don't see how, you don't see that him. he's really enjoying spending the money on frivolous, um, frivolous, <laughs> I can't even say it, frivolous things like you know he's not you know spending his money uh like materialistic things or things that don't really matter because usually you see to buy a gold chain get a gold teeth get a nice brand new car with some rims get some beat you know diamonds jewelry and he's not doing that he's not going that route as trying to look like the drug dealer in the neighborhood or the kingpin of the neighborhood you know he's not trying to look like that he's not trying to be like that um, he's, he's, because he's actually dealing with Teddy and Ted, Teddy's the government official. So he was like, man, invest your money. It's like, damn, Teddy, if you got him investing his money all overseas and this and that, is it actually being invested overseas and actually get some money with the bank or at the end, are you got, are you going to take it, Teddy? That's the question. Or is this like, you know, a setup so you can prove that Kevin is actually a kingpin drug dealers, a kingpin drug dealer. And he has these connections. He has these switch bank accounts, these foreign accounts and things like that. So is it used as evidence? You know, sometimes they say, bury your money, baby. They did that in Cocaine Cowboys, but the cops got it. <laughs> so we have that situation. Getting back to the story. So now Franklin, you know, he has a visit. And guess who's the visitor? Jerome comes and it's Lee. I was so happy. To, I was happy for Franklin to see Jerome, at his uncle Jerome, and see Leon. It was just, and then Jerome was like, oh, what the fuck? He's looking at his face. He was like, oh, nephew, what's going on? And he was like, what happened? He was like, yo, it was Ray Ray. He was like, tell Ray Ray, I'm going to kill his kid. I'm going to kill everything that he loved. I know where his grandmother stayed. I know where his mother stayed. I know everything. He was like, come on, man. I can't do it because 
because Franklin is weak now. He done just killed Kevin, his best friend. He's locked up. He he shamed his mother. He embarrassed his mother. He's not out on the street. He's in a strange place. He's scared. He's fearful. Even though they're showing it and they're not showing that he's fearful because he's trying to study the scene, the scene around him and trying to become a part of it. But he don't have it in him. And so that's when Leon gets on the phone. Was like, yo, man, I can't believe this shit is happening to you. But first, you know, Leon talks about what's going on with um LaWanda, Awanda, and he goes, I haven't seen her. She's gone. He and then and you know, Leon was like, yo, I should have listened to you. I should have kept her out the stash house. And Leon is, knows that Franklin is the brains. Franklin is the brains. Him, and that's why he trusts Auntie Lou so much. But, you know, Leon is the power, is the muscle. Jerome's the power and the muscle. And Jerome knows, knows people that he used to dealt with back in the day that can help situations out, like getting bail and, you know, an inside connection, whatever. But Franklin is the motherfucking brains. So, but now he's become the beast because he done, he done already murdered, like, one, two, three people now. I think three people. Or two because it's Kevin. The other, um, Ray Ray's friend, who else did he murder? Kevin, Ray Ray's friend. I think he, I get, I guess he only murdered two people. So if not, please let me know in the comments below. Cause I can't think right now. Um, so anyway, so we have that situation. Then Leon was like, yeah, I mean, you can't let this shit happen to you, man. You got to fight, go to the biggest motherfucker in there and bring him down, bring, bring him down. That's what they always tell you. You know, when you enter jail, like on TV, like, I don't know shit, like on TV, they show you like, all oh, this always go to the toughest person and documentaries, document that I have watched on jails and prisons and they say like you go to the toughest person um the one on Reichland, Reich, Reichler's Island Rikers Island um that was like the the best documentary I ever seen on prison life and they had like had um all types of people in there and they was showing like people with blades in their mouth talking to the camera you know what I'm gonna see if I can find it and I you know probably leave it under the video either today or tomorrow so anyways so we have that situation and you know leon is trying to tell him like yo go into the biggest motherfucker anybody look at you won't give you a problem fight fight tell him you you know you gotta fight man look at your face look at the way you look he beat he broke the phone so and leon was like yo i've been in here i know what's going on because we know um leon been to jail he's been to training school he's been locked up because he when the first season first started he was just getting out he knew who to, to talk to whatever so he's been locked up and all this other stuff and so Franklin was like no nah, I can't so Franklin is still you know at this pitiful stage where he's still weak but he is beaten up really bad because when he gets the phone call the prison I mean when he goes to visit Leon and Jerome when they go visit him or whatever the prison guard has to help him up so they're showing you how weak and how pain how much pain Franklin is in so Franklin gets you know help assistance and that was nice of the guard because <laughs> and the other guy was just looking at him struggling so we have that situation Franklin still you know he still he's he don't got no sneakers he ain't got nothing on his feet and, you know, he goes back to his bunk, he lays on his bed, and, you know, Ray Ray's coming back to attack, but then you have one of the inmates that are across from Franklin, he's ripping up his sheets, I thought he was going to take them sheets and tell Franklin, oh, to use these sheets, it could be a weapon, Franklin going to he's going to use a weapon, no one's paying attention to this motherfucker ripping up his sheets, he ripped up his sheets as, you know, Ray Ray's coming to attack Franklin, he hangs himself, and so then Franklin's people stop, I mean, uh, Ray Ray people stop, so they don't come to attack, you know, Franklin, and so... Franklin's like, damn, and he's just watching this guy hanging, and so that was, that's all traumatic, he's, he is facing, he's seeing so much different, he's like a fish out of water, with the situation, saying suicide, and everything like that, I don't even know what that guy was in for, why he committed suicide, and so, um, Franklin gets another visit, and it's his mother and his father, and when, when Sissy sees him, she's like, ah! she's all like she's done that's her son that's her baby you know she wanted him to have a different life to go to college to go to school that's why he went to school in the suburbs and he looked all messed up Franklin looked beat down he looked all messed up the makeup they did for Franklin looked perfect and she she can't conduct herself she can't control herself but she shouldn't but she doesn't know that 
you can't do that to somebody in jail. You can't bring that weight on them in jail because they're already dealing with weight. And he was like, I don't need this shit now. He was like, I don't want it. He was like, Alton, yo, get her the F away from here. Like, get her away from here. She can't. If she's going to act like that, I don't need this. Like, he was so happy to see his mom. He wanted to talk to his mom, get some type of encouragement or something from her. But she couldn't hold it in because she's never seen him beat down like this. She never been to a jail to to visit her son and that's her only child and to see that he's been attacked like this you know she has to feel like you know she's a failure too as well she can't help him she can't protect him she can't complain she can't do nothing it's just there you know imagine someone you love being hurt and abused and you just sit there and you can't do nothing your hands are tied behind your back and then the father's like he can deal with it because he's been locked up before he was in a black panthers and so he's trying to give franklin some advice was like you know like you know uh, Franklin looks at his father like, yo, listen, I, I, and never in a million years where I think that the tape, it, it'll be like this. I'm in jail and you, and you out, I, I, I'm locked up and you free. And now I'm, you trying to give me some daddy advice or whatever. And he was like, yo, son, listen, I know this is hard for you to take this advice, but you got to leave. You got to fight something inside you. You know, there's still something in there because his father has been beat down. His father's been in the war. His father been in the Black Panthers, got on alcohol, been abused, been beat up, been mistreated, fought against the system, water holes, dogs. Dogs, you know, people that he know been assassinated, but he had to find something in him to fight. Just like he had to find something in him to fight to get clean now while he's with Sissy. So he's trying to tell Franklin there's still something inside of you. But Franklin gets upset. He's like, why are you telling me this motherfucker? And like, you know, now you want to be a father now. Now you want to give advice after all these years. I can't believe this. And he's just like, um, he just really pissed. Franklin's really pissed at this time. And so what Franklin father was telling him, it all comes inside because now he's angry at his father. He's angry that his father's there. He's angry that his father's coming now. He's angry that his father's in the picture now and he's getting, and you know, and, and, um, and he's trying to give him advice and tell him something when he wasn't there his whole life, you know, half of his life. And so now, you know, uh, Franklin gets mad. And he's trying to beat through the thing. He's getting that rage, that anger. And so he's finding that little bit of him to fight again. And then he's finding, uh, then he's remembering what, you know, Leon said to him. Like, beat the biggest motherfucker up, man. And so, <laughs> I don't know. I just thought this episode was like the shit. Like, I don't know why this show is not number one. So we have this situation. Franklin, the guards are getting Franklin. He's fighting against the guard. He's being, he's go, he goes into, and he, and so they let him back into the room. And then he knocks down some, his, some Spanish, some Mexican dude, take his sneakers and he gets jumped, but he's holding on to the sneakers for dear life. Cause he's holding on to the game. He's holding on to the life. He's holding on to respect. He's holding on to, he's holding on tight because you ain't taking that from me. You ain't taking shit from me no more. And so he get put in the hole. He comes out the hole. And then Ray Ray and his boys over there, oh, they let him out so quick, so easy. And so Franklin was like, yo, when I told you I was in here, I'm in here for murder, motherfucker. I'm in here for murder. That's what I'm in here for. And let me let you know that I know where your moms, your grandma lives at, your sister, your auntie, your grandmother, your cousin, your friends, and we'll take them out. And he was like, oh, we don't believe you. Oh, you don't believe me? What, what happened to your boy? And you know I'm real. You know I'm telling the truth, mother sucker. So Franklin at this point has taken his power back. He's back to Franklin. And um, and if he's not back to Franklin, he's not going to show weakness because he's been showing weakness. But the weakness comes the weakness comes from fear because he's never been in, a, in this environment before. Then on top of that, he just killed his best friend. Then on top of that, you know, it's just so much going on and he's locked up and he don't know what's going to happen with him. So now Franklin gets he gets the call from the prison of guards. Uh, but first. You know, Franklin, he calls Auntie Lou. He tells Lou what to do. Like, he calls Auntie Lou and was like, can I speak to Lou? And so when he calls home, and so it tells you that he trusts his Auntie Lou more than he trusts anybody. And, and he sees something special in her, just like she sees something special in him. And they have the closest and the tightest bond. I believe I, remit, I mentioned that, you know, my last video review of the show. So she goes to see Teddy. And, you know, it was set up. She goes to see Teddy. Um... And she talks to Teddy. She was like, yo, listen, Franklin wants to keep this business going, blah, 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 but he's in jail. But but Teddy already knows that Franklin's in jail. He knows that he's in jail, but and he wasn't going to do shit about it, motherfucker. And so he wasn't going to do nothing about it, but 
Auntie Lou, she reached out to him and she was just like, yo, listen, the DEA is supposed to be the witness on the case. And that's all they have as a witness because Franklin got all the information from when he went to his pre-trial preliminaries or whatever or arraignment. Arraignment, I believe he found out all that information. And so um, basically Auntie Lou is telling um, Reed that, you know, she might be taking over the business. She wants to do this. And Reed was like, I don't know. Blase in the third. I don't understand. But Auntie Lou was like, yo, listen, the DEA ain't snoofing around. We still selling drugs. We still got weight. We still got crack houses. We still got drugs. We still we still raining in your cocaine, Teddy. Uh, and the DEA has forgot about us. So order for Franklin to get out. All we need is for this DEA agent to disappear or go away. And Teddy was like, oh, I can't. Oh, no, I can't. And so, you know, Auntie Lou was like, yo, listen, Franklin words, not mine's. And so Teddy's like, and she was like, Teddy, um, Franklin sees something special in you. He sees something special in me, but I don't know. All I know is I need him home. I don't want him locked up behind bars. He's special to me. He's this, he's that. It's my, you know, it's my nephew. You know what I'm saying? He's good peoples. I don't know if he enjoys the conversation that you guys have or what it is, but he sent me out here to meet you. I, I guess he trusts me. And so then we clicks and he was like, Franklin said that you you would need some convincing. He was like, Franklin is right. So Reed does have a level of respect for Franklin more than he has for Javi um, um, and um, Gustavo and Lucia, you know, because they're hardened criminals. Franklin's not really a hardened criminal, but now he's, he's they done got murdered. He's been in jail. He's been in prison now. And so... You know, Teddy goes to see, you know, Lorena, and basically he meets up with her. He got his gun on his lap. It's like, why he's got his gun on his Like, was he plotting to kill her? But we know Teddy will only kill unless he has to. It's not something that um, he would do unless he has to do it or it's for the greater of the plan. That's like the weird, you know, applications and people had, I'm doing this for the country, you know. So we have that situation so we have that situation go on, and and um, so he meets up with her, and he and she was like, well, you know what? I'll agree to everything as long as I can get all the cases, as long as I can uh, make all the arrests, and then I'll put all the scumbags behind bars. But yeah, you're gonna be a scumbag too because you're a part of this, and you're putting the drugs and flooding in the community until you get these people. Basically, Teddy's like, I need a year or two. I'll have this, and I promise you all the big arrests, and then you'll see how things change because basically, you know. Um, Teddy is trying to fund the war in Nicaragua and um, get rid of the communists or whatever bullshit like that, you know, that they have to say to do what they need to do, excuse me, or whatever. So I'm just like, damn, so Lorena was like, yeah, I'm down. I want to arrest the people. I want to arrest the criminal, knowing that you're going to be a criminal too as well because Teddy is a criminal, but he is a licensed criminal. And we have licensed criminals all day today just going around killing and shooting up people right that have badges so we have that situation go on and um so franklin goes to so franklin gets out of jail so lorena she recants her story so she's down with teddy and so lorena says to teddy like this kid franklin must be really special to you because now she was like you know i'm a you know it's not gonna look pretty good you know i could be charged with witness tampering I could be charged with you know lying and all this other stuff Teddy was like they, they're not gonna be happy but they're gonna let it go because you are still a licensed DEA agent and Franklin I mean and Teddy needs a DEA agent on his side he needs to know what she she has and plus to get her off his back too as well maybe he likes it too who knows maybe they might be hooking up later on because you know Teddy hasn't got no ass since first season so we have that situation go down and um even franklin got some ass <laughs> so we have that situation go down franklin's out he's free and he goes bring by eighty thousand dollars to javi and tell javi like you know frank you know the dude you know teddy got me out of jail this and that he got to be something and so basically he lets javi know what he thinks or whatever suspicions that he has and all the connections and things that was going on and he's just having a conversation with Javi so Javi's thinking too as well because Javi has snitched too as well and then on top of that Javi has to watch his back too and basically Franklin don't want no beef with Javi too as well then on top of that he knows Teddy ain't no average dude because as he's talking to you know Kevin's grave he's telling Kevin I don't even think about 
about shooting you. I don't think about the dude that hang himself. I don't think about Ray Ray's boy. But the dude that I do see, the thing, the, what I have nightmares about is Teddy because he don't know who Teddy really is. And Teddy has to be a government official, and he's working for a government official, which is the CIA. They they can get they got license to kill too as well. So it's just like he's like, damn, like that's my biggest nightmare because I don't even know what kind of dude is this. So he finds out that you know he talks to Javi. Javi's telling him that yeah, he's pay, like he gives me like millions of I, I'm he makes millions and millions of dollars because I'm sending tons of guns over to Nicaragua to help with you know the um, communists and try to get this and get that. Like you know it's got to be like ten million. You know the weapons that he's he's he like the weapons that you know Teddy is purchasing. It's like for war for an army that can kill millions and millions of people and i'm making these shipments regularly so now javi and you know franklin are figuring out that they're actually working for a government agent and that means that they work for a government official too as well but i don't know what they're going to do about that situation because if they do take out teddy i don't think there's going to be any i don't think i'm assuming that there might not be any repercussions because um there's nobody that really wants to say on file that Teddy has anything to do with him, but Teddy is the CIA. But basically, everybody is like a closed operation. But there are some, the um, Teddy's new boss know who he is. Would they do an investigation to find out what's going on if something does happen to Teddy or if he does disappear? Um, but I don't believe they want to take him out because he's the biggest gangster of them all. And as Franklin is meeting up with Teddy, they talk, they shake hands, and it looks like somebody was taking pictures. I don't know if it was Lorena taking pictures or was it Harvey taking pictures as well as well but you know Franklin is trying to be aware and find out more information about Teddy Reed which is not his you know it's not his name so he so I guess they're going to be watching Teddy and see what's going on with that so now they know like the jig is up but they also protected too as well because they they're not going to go down until his operation is finished but I don't know if Teddy's actually going to bring you know, Kevin down too as well, because it seems like he has, uh, he's fond of, not Kevin, he's fond of Franklin. So we'll see. And Franklin tells, you know, Teddy that it's not, it's control, but you know, if anybody gets out of order, anybody gets out of line, they're just going to be done. Damn, we got to wait for a whole nother season to see what's going to happen where, you know, they haven't confirmed that Gustavo's dead, but they kind of like confirmed that Kevin's dead too as well. And so, We'll see what happened. This was crazy. This was like a wake-up call for Franklin. But now the bond and the closeness with Auntie Lou, where I don't think Auntie Lou's ever going to leave. And um, I think Franklin's going to start now building his relationship with his father because that raise that his father created helped him fight and defend himself. So he might have a little bit more respect for his father. And since his father's back with his mother, so Franklin will be home and he'll have more eyes to protect him. We'll see who else come up into the situation. But since Franklin doesn't have the witness of the DEA agent, he's free. But the cops are still going to be looking at him because he has his next door neighbor, you know, I want to see him down. Peace. I'm out. One love. This was an excellent season. I just love this show. The show is just, I mean, the, the acting is great. I mean, everybody pulls their part and their role. And I would have liked to see Lucia, Lucia more at the end than to see Lorena. But I don't know if Lorena is going to be taking over where... I don't know how Lucia, Lucia is going to fit back into the mix. Like, how is she going to get back to, and the drugs? And how much she does have money because, you know, she ran with the money. So is she going to, and she's going to have the Mexicans after her to kill her. So how is she, what is she going to do? Is she going to hook up with Gabby? What's going to be her next move? Because now she's going to have beef with Franklin. But I don't think Franklin, since Franklin knows what he's dealing with with Teddy, might be working for a government official, he's going to even be more tighter and more clean with the situation. He's not going to think that, you know, it's a parachute for now because it can all fall down so let's see what what moves franklin make with this situation by discovering who you know teddy is and then now he's working along with javi him and javi cleared up their relationship so it seems like a lot's going to go on peace and my one love